everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and phew, we have a lot of leftover dye around from a bunch of projects that I was doing today. And I thought it would be fun to use this dye to dye some Knit Pick Swish Worsted yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. In this pot, I have an exhausted dye bag that had started off with the proportion of two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water. As it got low, I added more water with this proportion and back and forth for the course of the day. But now let's add, and I think there might be like the barest hint of some color left in here, but let's go ahead and add Our yarn. Now, this is definitely not a low immersion situation at all. Um, there is a lot of water in here, but we are going to add some dry dye powders and then I'm going to rinse out cups and add leftover dyes sort of like all over and we will see what we get. Since I am dealing with some leftover dry dyes, I will be wearing some personal safety equipment, including a face mask safety goggles, and gloves. First, I've got some blue dye. Whoa! Okay, that looked cool as I dumped it in. Oh, wow. That was so cool! The dye pot is already hot. This is a dedicated dye pot. Um, Everything that you will see me use today is used only for dyeing yarn. So that was some blue. And let's do that same kind of like dump and tap with some yellow. Oh, this is cool. There are many ways I could have gone about wanting to add this color. And these colors might just completely mix together. Um, but it does look like we have some blue speckling and some yellow speckling that happened. So that is pretty cool. Uh, there's still, there's still some color I have a lot more of the red powder, so, hmm, hmm, all right, let's see, oh, we got some green going on, okay, I think what I want to do is, and this is what happens when you make things up as you go along. I think I'm going to remove this yarn. Set it in a container that can handle some heat. And then here is the red powder that I have. Now technically you should add some water to the powder, not the other way around, because we could end up with some globs that don't dissolve well. But I'm just trying to use up some dyes, so we are breaking the rules today. And honestly, I don't mind if we get some speckles or whatnot in here. Okay. I'm now going to put our yarn back in. There's a lot more red than the other colors. So this will give us like somewhat of a tonal, maybe some like other hints of color in there. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And that's just sort of rinsing out the rest of the cup. But now I'm gonna go ahead and let this go for 10 minutes and we'll see if the water starts to clear. Let's take a look. The funny thing is that this is so, so red that the last time I did something sort of like this, 
Um, it was also on the same yarn base when I got like a super, super deep saturated red. Um, that is funny. Uh, there's still a little bit of color in there. I'm just going to go ahead and add a nice unscientific splash of vinegar and uh, leave the heat on for about five more minutes. Most of the color has absorbed, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the pot to cool just in case we'll absorb any more color. After a couple of hours, this is mostly cool and the bath has almost completely cleared. So I am now removing the yarn. It's still actually a little warm, so I'm going to let it cool completely and then we'll wash it. Let's wash this yarn, which has uh, very little of the blue. I guess maybe a hint of some of that blue and there's also a hint of some yellow on the red. But, I'm curious if we will see, yep, there is some bleeding, but this is a pretty saturated color from the amount of uh, dye that we have used. I will be adding some clear dish soap. Sometimes that helps uh, some more of the unbound dye to come out. The skein is a bit tangled right now, but I'm still trying to keep a nice hand melodic as I am rinsing. And while we're seeing bleeding, for the total depth of color, it isn't really that, that bad. Ooh, like some bluish hint. Oh dear. But yeah, so I don't tangle it more. I am keeping a little hand on the yarn. So let's see. Wahoo, we are clear. So anyway, I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap and then we will go hang up the yarn to dry. There is no question that the red dominated this colorway. A bit of the yellow does sort of shine through. In some areas we see sort of a reddish orange and in others we see a bit more of the yellow. The blue is way more subtle. There are some hints of purple uh, and yeah, maybe a few scattered blue speckles. But again, the red was so concentrated or there was so much more red dye that it really sort of overtook the yarn. I am really just starting to play around with dry acid dye powders. And so we got some stunning uneven absorption in part because of the way we added the yarn and everything, um, but in part we probably had some uneven dissolving of the dye when I added the red dye into the pot and then put the yarn back in. And so we've got some gorgeous sort of modeling in some of these areas. The Knit Picks Swish line is a lovely, lovely yarn line to dye. It is fairly lofty, has a pretty low twist, but this 100% Superwash Merino yarn absorbs dye so, so beautifully. And then it's really, really soft. So it's great for a lot of different kinds of garments. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the yarn base that I used in this video, you can find my Knit Picks affiliate link in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy these fun, leave no dye left behind videos where I will literally throw whatever I've got left into a pot and see what kind of cool, one-of-a-kind colorways we create, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I have a weekly video series called Dye Pot Weekly, which takes a more planned look at dyeing yarn. And I measure things so that way colors can be a little more reproducible so you can attempt it at home. But one of the things that I really try to showcase is this attitude of, you know, if you have leftover dye, you can, without knowing what kind of result you will get, you can throw things together and create something really, really wonderful. So there's really no reason to waste any color. If you really love some of these one-of-a-kind colorways that I create, check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. My shop is filled with yarn that I've dyed in past and upcoming 
Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos. So you can watch the video, buy the yarn, and then knit and rewatch the video and see how the yarn was made as you transform it into something wonderful. But since most of these colorways are one of a kind, if there's yarn that you really love, make sure that you snag it before someone else does. Thank you so much for watching.